Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm back today with San Gran and the Midnight Party and I am just working away here on the fifth signature today. So if we start out just kind of looking at what's happening in this picture, we've got um, this kingfisher or hummingbird bird with a crown. We've got some little fairies here. We've got Sangran in this beautiful umbrella with this um, swan head as the handle. And we've got our little girl here whose name escapes me at the moment in the water with these water lilies. So that's what's happening on that page. Now, um, I've moved over because there's a lot of kind of, you know, this is a story about dreaming. So I made this pocket yesterday and this is a little moon boy um, and it's so cute. It's a little illustration from a children's book. And then I had cut up all of my um, collage boards. And so I have this tag here that I want to embellish. Um, just going to take a bit of a quick look at what else I have going on in this signature. We have a tarot card tuck spot there, so we're going to need something else here like a journal card. Um, here we have a little cottage, ostrich and a snake and a pig. Okay. That's a pocket. We have a bunny, our little cottage, or the coloring book. All right, so yes, we have some some ephemera to make. So I've got my things here, the different kinds of themes that are in the book, so that I can start to kind of pull from some some of my resources here, my books and things that I like to make ephemera with. So. I'm going to first take a look into um, Gyofujikawa's Come Follow Me and see if there's anything that I particularly would like to use on this tag. <clears throat> there's so many cute things in this book. This is a really sweet book. I kind of like this bird with these little, these little LV friends on it. Yeah, and I think I'm fine to use these these little fairy elf type. They look very much like the ones in the book. So let's just start at this point. So I will first just kind of give this a fussy cut. It's early morning this morning. So I'm working away and um, I have work today. I have to do grocery shopping. I have an appointment. Oh, it's a day. Another day. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to the holidays just because like I could really use some downtime to be honest. Okay. So yeah, that will fit really sweetly there. And then I want to see if I have, um, here's a bit of this paper. This is from the cover. And I'm wondering if maybe I kind of make this like a bit of a cluster. And then I've got, let's just pick up sand grain for a minute here. So I'll take all of my, I have all of this ephemera, still kind of in progress here. This is the stuff that I haven't done anything with yet. So I'll just plunk it over to the side so I can easily grab it as we go through these things. This little envelope. Okay. okay, now I've got this last little bit here. I've been using um, the cutouts from the Celestial Kit. It's a Stamperia kit and it's just little bits of ephemera and it's really cute. So I'm thinking I will glue this down. My glue book. I'm almost done with this glue book. I have a meager few pages left. I will save these bits here though because these are really great for laminating over. They're awesome. Okay. So let's just glue down our little fairies on this sweet little bird onto this beautiful paper that my awesome daughter bought me. <laughs> okay. I think I, 
I don't know. I'm going to probably put some art glitter glue on that. I feel like it needs it because the book page, well, I mean, it's pretty good, but the book page is a little thick. Plus the handmade paper has been marbled and it might just need a little extra. Okay. Pop that back down. better and then I will just go around the edges the white edges with a bit of ink <clears throat> and so I just woke up my son well I didn't wake up he woke up and got him ready to come downstairs and start his day the dogs are all fed and watered and everything for the morning is done. It's kind of a nice time in the morning when all of the morning work is done and then I get this little bit of time before I have to start my business day. There we go. that down like that if it over if it goes over a little bit that's okay because I can trim it and I'm thinking I want to put this here but there's still like a bit of an imbalance this needs more to sort of I don't know I think these might be good we'll cut a few of these it just needs something to break up the shapes and create a bit of a balance. Um, okay, there's two of those. So I'll go ahead and glue this down. And then we'll glue this down as well. I think I'll just put it straight. I need to refill this bottle. I'm hoping to get some time today to card some wool. So I want to do some spinning. I've really been feeling like spinning, but I'm also sort of like really into making this journal right now. <laughs> oh, the time. I never have enough of it. Okay, let's do one of these here. Another one up here. And this little kind of fabric cluster I'm going to put right there. I always keep this little scrappy kind of use things up type bin of little scraps of fabric and such on my desk just to make sure that I use things up. take a little break there husband lovely as he is bought me coffee <laughs> okay and I think I will cut a little 
the slot in here with this punch. <clears throat> and maybe some of this ribbon would be cute. I will stitch around this whole thing as well. So yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, that'll be sweet. Okay. So that one is done except for the stitching. Happy with it. Just plunk it over here and then reassemble my glues back how I need them again. <laughs> okay. Then, so that will account for a tag for this. Now we need a journal card. Um, let's take a look at the bases that I have here. That's a good one right there, that nice big one. Okay, let's go with that. Now, I wanted to take a look inside. I have this book, this Hans Christian Andersen classic fairy tales book. Now, overall, inside this story, there are a lot of toys and, you know, the things of a children's room. So, um, oh my goodness, look how cute this chunky mouse chewing up a book. So cute. This is who's this illustrator? This is Michael Adams. This is a beautifully illustrated book, actually. It's a big fire. <laughs> the Snow Queen. Oh, that's lovely. That would make a nice Christmas journal. Although these girls are kind of pulling on this, the antlers of the. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the deer's not loving that. Um. Oh wow, that's amazing. That would actually fit very well in this book. See, this is the kind of picture I wouldn't take out of a book if like the whole entire book was a story about, you know, one thing. I would probably make a journal entirely out of that because of this image, but because this is like a mixed bag of, you know, different things. Oh, that's beautiful too. I'm not going to uh, fret about it. <laughs> these are pretty to these stained glass images, but I think for the purpose of this journal, this is what I want to use. Um, not for the tag at all, but of course I want to keep the entire thing intact as best I can. So the way that I enjoy doing that is making a piece of stationery that would simply get folded and we would keep this whole beautiful thing. So now we need to back it with some paper and I've got a nice fly page from a book here, a nice weight of paper, and I will just glue that on and stitch around it. You can also use a wax seal or um, a little bit of lace and an eyelid or a piece of embroidery to just give it kind of a, a final touch when you fold it. Okay, now we'll just push this glue back out of the way here. If I had a wish, it would be that there was some kind of a magnetic field that would just pull my glue container lids back on after I'm done with the glue. Everything would just <clears throat> go back to how I need it to be. <laughs> my daughter yesterday, she's having a bath and after her bath I <clears throat> was putting some Moroccan oil in her hair and stuff and she she had a little stray eyelash on her cheek so I said oh just a moment you have an eyelash and so I I held on to the eyelash and we have this little thing in our family where we say okay it's time to make an eyelash wish and she's only just kind of conceptualizing what wishes are and so she said I wish to be in a field of flowers. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's really nice. <laughs> Pretty perfect wish, I think. 
Okay, um, now that will account for probably filling up the, not that one, there's another, the tarot card over here that I have here, this beautiful tarot card. Um, I will put that in here, I think, after I stitch around it. Now this, I'm actually going to leave it alone. I was thinking of making a pocket for it, but I think I just want to leave this page. I think it's so pretty. It's been cabbage dyed. It's lovely. And I'm trying not to overstuff this book with ephemera. I'm just, I've used a lot of really lovely papers in it and um, I'm sort of accenting it with ephemera. So we need something for this. And I think that journal card that I chose before will be perfect. We just need to put something on it. Um, we will still need, I think, one more, I'll probably do one more pocket and I'll do it at the back here and then we'll need something for that. I might even do like a flip, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so first thing is to find something <clears throat> for this. So I also grabbed this book of hats because hats is one of the other things that's talked about and is in the journal. And the sand grand has a, she has a lovely kind of almost like a wicker basket looking straw hat. <clears throat> that's just a nice piece of stationery. I love the color of the pages in this book. They're wonderful. Oh, wow. That's nice. That honestly kind of reminds me of sand grand's hat. I think I might use that. This could be a more ancient depiction of Sangran. Let's tear that out. I think I want to put that in there. Okay. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Now, I want to find if there's something else that would be kind of fun in this journal that I could use as a focal point on that collage tag. So many beautiful images of people in their hats and this is hair like this is people's hair that's been like wound up into these incredible styles that look like hats Let's see if we have something i'm sorry if i don't have this whole booking frame it's really hard to um it's a big book Mm, not quite. This is a little more challenging than I thought it would be. That's a Mad Hatter's Tea Party. That's cute. Oh, those are cool. This one overall could go with like the nighttime story and the, uh, the hats. And it's like a very dream state kind of image. Let's try it. I should really take a blade to this, but I don't want to. Okay, but then if I think about it, I don't think I can use it as a focal point because I wouldn't want to cut those out and then lose the, um, the moons. However, I can make this into two things, I think. covers the whole thing so mm, but what if I got brave fussy cut.
Oh, that's a little shiny. Oh yeah, I do like that. Okay. Okay, let's do that. <clears throat> All I hear is my daughter above me on the trampoline, <laughs> or my son potentially. It sounds like my daughter though, because she has that kind of constant motion. My son's a little more jump on, jump off, do something else, come back. <laughs> my daughter is like a, a workout fiend at the age of six or something. She's so funny. We're coming at a swim class yesterday and our swim class is in our local gym community center. and. Um, we're walking by the gym where people are, you know, working out on the equipment and <clears throat> she's like, Mom, I want to, you know, I want to go do this and I want to do <laughs> I said it's for 14 and up. I'm sorry you can't, but she really wants to. She's always trying to play on like the elliptical in my room and uh, I let her do a bit on it as long as she's focused. I tell her like you need to pay complete undivided attention when you're on there because you know you wouldn't want to fall off and hurt yourself. So she's been pretty good about it. So I don't mind. If she likes to do that kind of thing, that's fine. Okay. I'll just give this a bit of inking. I am half tempted to go over it with um a matte paste or something or like a matte translucent paste to just make it not so shiny but I think it's okay actually okay let's call that good for now because we're going to stitch around it as well um, <clears throat> now I've got these two other images that are hat images that I want to use as well so let me cut this one out and I was saying I might want to create a flip maybe I'll create a flip using this <clears throat> sorry my throat's a little grumbly today I don't know why <laughs> grumbly okay. so let me take a look where I want to put my flip. I think on here. Um, so I need a piece of paper that I'm going to attach, have it flip up. I've been kind of developing this opinion about flips up and, and whatnot. Um, so I feel like it's probably not the best situation to write on something that tips up or down. So I think what I want to do instead is if I have writing space, like I want it to be like on the front here. This is where the writing space will happen, maybe with some kind of an embellishment. But then when you tip this up, I want this to be like the image that you see something fun there. You don't have to write up there, but maybe also I'll include a pocket with a journal tag because it just, it feels like more functional to me. Um, um, than what uh, you know I could do with a different kind of a tip up. So I'm gonna get my big one of my big paper bags here. And I'm just gonna do a rough cut across the bottom to get rid of the bottom. really need to like move a bunch of stuff. I've got all these projects I want to I want to like organize sitting beside me today so if you hear a lot of calamity every time I'm moving things that would be why. Okay. Take a whole panel of this bag. So what I want to do is take this piece of paper bag fold this in half like this now this is the image that I want to put on it so let me grab my art glitter glue
leaving a little bit of space underneath and a little bit of space on top. Then to here. Okay. Yeah, that's a fun shape. All right, so now I'll just clip a bit off the top. Then trying to decide if I want this to be a tip out or I kind of like it as a tip out rather than a flip up. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So this is actually perfect because I have the bag seam right here. So I can uh, make use of the bag seam as that extra bit of paper that I need back here to attach it. that extra layer that I don't need off. Now I think what I'm going to do first though, I want to put stitches around this image and then I'm going to like stitch this closed so it's like a little pocket insert. So I'll take a moment to do my stitching and I'll be right back. Okay, so stitching has been done. Now I've got to go back to the front here and we have this cute little tag so it's all stitched around now and it will pop right in here. But one thing that I wanted to do that I've been waiting for is to just add my, whoops, my washi tape to this because we've got a bit of a hole situation here. Okay, and this washi tape is actually so great I do not have to glue stick it. <laughs> it is not, it is actually a permanent washi tape that does not require glue. Then I'm going to come over here and I don't normally, oh this is so sticky, I normally don't do both sides of my page because you don't need to to be honest but I just want to cover up those holes. I mean they don't necessarily bother me to be honest but I'm only going to do I think like a half a page of washi right here and then just give it a little tear like that on an angle just so it looks cute and like a little you know patchy kind of thing like a little patchwork is another theme in this journal so now we'll just give it a nice fold again that way and the other way Okay, so yeah, that's very cute. I'm happy with that. And this will go in here. Then these go back around and this goes back inside and we can continue along here. Okay. Hmm. That might be a cute little envelope for there. I will think about it. Okay. Now we have this and I stitched around the stationery. I'll just clip the little threads a little bit. So what I want to be on the outside I think will be that sweet little mouse face. So now we have this folded piece of stationery and we get to keep that whole beautiful image 
Um, and actually, I think, yeah, I like that with the, that goes really nicely with the whole page. Okay. Now, we have this stitched around. And then this is where I wanted to do the flip. So I've got this stitched here. Let me just um, trim these again. More trimming of threads. Then we're going to glue this back flap down. Did I, did I do that the wrong way? Well, to my mind, actually, I think, yeah, I was going to go for having the image on the inside, I said, right? So that's actually backwards. But do I want it like that? Because see how this image matches, like the color matches beautifully. And I mean, it's not a horrible thing to write on these spaces. It's really not. I've, I've done it many times. And then I wanted to see if I could use this little bit here as a little tuck spot. So yeah, let's just do that. So we'll have like a little tuck spot on the inside, a little um, pocket up top and the image on the outside. That will be cute. And then perhaps what I'll do is maybe embellish this. And actually I might use this envelope um, as a little tuck spot here so that, yes, we can put a journal card. Let's do that. So I'll glue this down. How do I want to glue it down? Um, so I just had to take a little break there. Um, okay. I have not progressed in any way. I'm just, <laughs> I just had to take a quick break to answer a phone call. Okay, there we go. So um, that is now glue free. Now I want to do this again. So I need it to be just this, this inner side here. Pull all this over and put it on a bit of an angle like that. That's what I want to do. And then we'll create two pieces for this page. So that folds this way. And then I might just take a little nip out of it with my punch, but I won't, um, I won't hit that uh, picture. There we go. Let's like fold this a few times to make sure it's well folded. Then we'll open this up a little bit because we want it to be like a tiny, tiny little tuck area. And then this, everything will come together. So, um, first thing I need to do is now I need one, two, three, four pieces to go in this page. So it'll be a little bit of a dynamic kind of little page there. So let's move some stuff around here. Okay, so I'm not gonna use this in that signature because I've already used a piece like of that paper in this signature. And I like to spread all of anything thematic. I like it to go all the way through the journal, not be like one signature that's all about that unless I'm telling a story. Whoops. That'd be my alarm. Okay. So let's see if we can find something again out of this book that would be fun to use in there. Okay. So I need a journal card. I need a little tiny bit, like something I would punch out with a punch for that little envelope, which I'm kind of looking at this little sweet fairy here and thinking that would be nice. Hmm, I could also do a nice little poem. Hmm. 
the lonely elf lady oh my goodness how cute is she you know what i'm gonna use her because like it's kind of sand gran like sand gran okay let's play with this page here so we'll remove this text here and this rough edge then I need my punch from over here. Maybe we'll make this like a thematic little collection that goes together for that page. So first I'm gonna punch this. Then I need to put some paper on the back of it, like a little, <laughs> there's a little scrap here. Let's glue this on a little scrap of brown paper. To tear it a bit. There. To here. Okay. So now that's like a little little floral stamp but you could write a little something on the back right so cute so why did I make that remember we have that little envelope let me go back to the page that I'm working I'm doing all of this work for here right here okay so move the punch aside because I'm done with that and I can lay this over here so we can take a look at what we're doing um, so if we open this up we've got this little envelope here and that will go inside right like that. And then I want to do a bit of inking on here. Okay. Just want to add like a little, this is just black soot. I just want to add a bit of kind of the creasy details from that fun paper bag. Okay. So we've done that now we can go over here and take a look so maybe we'll do a journal card of sand gran to go inside here and then this beautiful bird can go in the tuck spot so do sand gran that then let me check the size that i can do for the tuck spot here Right, like that. So about at the end, we'll still get to keep this mushroom, which is good. Yeah, so that in here. Mm -hmm. Then I need to check the height of this as well. Let's see how tall this can be. I want it to stick out a little bit and I am going to stitch and put something on top to pull it out easy. So we'll get rid of this white space at the bottom. That will be fine. And now let's make these two journal cards. And I'll just toss this over to the side for a moment. I want to tear a little off this edge. Okay. Okay. I will cut these out. Okay. 
And we have a little frog there too, which is perfect because that's another one of the themes in the book. So that's great. And then we need a pull, something to pull this up with. I don't want to cover up um, all those purple flowers. Oops. Oh, this might be perfect because it's also purple. So we could use a piece of book spine. See, I always keep these fun pieces of book spine because they're awesome for this kind of thing. So let's put it over here, right like that, and I will just stitch that on. Um, I want to round the corners of this though. Okay, so that's that one. Then over here we need to cut this one. greenery off the side of this page here. Over here I want to pop it on the corner. Let's make sure we're right side up. Yes we are. Okay. Good good. Just gives a little more visual interest to the other side of the page. Is my right here. Okay. Then we need a word, I think, snippet. Oh, you know what? Let me look on here because this is like from the story down in the bottom of the garden. Almost forgotten. I love almost forgotten. Let's grab that. Maybe we could write a little poem based on what's going on on the page. Um, old and withered tree. gnarled roots hidden by weeds that once lived a little old love elf lady by the name of Mrs. Small. I'm going to take the it's gnarled and hidden by the weeds. Mrs. Small was lonely. She loved her friends, but she was lonely for a family, her very own family. Frog and squirrel and bird and mouse and even snail all had families but that they loved and cherished. But there was no one Mrs. Small's pleasant to share Mrs. Small's pleasant home and agreeable life. Oh dear, she sighed. If only I had someone to cook and care for. If I had my own family. Hmm. Okay, so almost forgotten. Old and withered tree. It's gnarled roots. Hidden by weeds. Okay, hold on. Why is my phone? Oh, it's because I have my punch today. I'm like, why is my phone making that obnoxious? You can sound. <laughs> hold on. Okay, we need one more sentence off this page. So we're going to take the word but, but not to worry. Loved and cherished. Okay, so. What I want to do with that is um, I've got these put this here. This is too small. I want to take like a nice gnarly piece of book spine. Okay, and try to add it here, but I don't want to cover up too much of those buttercups. They're so pretty. The buttercup flowers or the mushroom. Maybe I want to do this down here actually, because then I don't cover up either of them. So let's try to put this together now. Okay. So 
get our piece of gnarly spine down here first because it gives such a nice feel. All right, um, now we need our words. So let me start at the bottom because then we know we're not going to run out of space. So loved and cherished goes at the bottom. I just have to kind of hold this down for a moment because we're gluing onto a textured surface. It will be fine. Art glitter glue is up to the job. Okay. And then we need that little word, but. Gluing all these tiny pieces of book spine to my fingers. Um, and we have like the mushroom and the bird, you know, showing appreciation to the old withered tree. let me stitch this stuff um, and come back and we'll put that page all together okay so I have stitched around those two journal cards you can grab our signature again here there we go. So here we go now this one goes in here, as so, and then this one up here, as so. Okay, so now we have this very sweet little um, situation going on here. Then, let me see if I have, let's try and see, did I keep that page from the elf lady anywhere? Or did I use it all? Hmm, I don't see it. I may look for it and find it again, and um, I may consider adding something here that is like a similar sentiment. Oh, here it is on the ground. One minute. Okay. Hmm. I don't want to use the lonely elf lady. Um, there is agreeable life. Cooking elfin dishes. <laughs> Often wistful. Hmm. I think it's okay, actually. I think it's okay. I don't necessarily think there's anything on this page that I could use. But I mean, there is the rest of the story of the elf lady in here. And maybe we could find something. Um. longing for company. How nice of you to come. Good friend. And so the days passed. Here she meets a cat. This and that over tea and tasty elven cookies. This and that over tea. That could be fun. And so the days passed. It must be the wind blowing. A note on the blanket. Um, hmm. Hmm. 
do pause for a moment. That could be nice. Oh, you know what? I think I found something. Hold on. Sometimes I just get stuck on having to do something. And this is one of those moments in time. I need my ink because we're going to ink this. Do I need to re-ink this? No, I don't. That's good. Okay. So just to tie this in a little bit and take a long look, you might, you just might see tiny Mrs. Small with her family in the tall and tangled weeds around the old withered and withered tree. I just want to tie that in, even though I know that this is a different piece of, you know, work. It's like an entirely different book. It's like a different kind of scene going on. I feel like that's what she's reading in her book. She's reading the story here that we're going to now see in the rest of the work that is a part of this page. So that will make it slightly more magical here. And it also kind of, you know, like it makes a little sense if I'm saying that, you know, because of this hat, this is a depiction, like a more ancient depiction of sand gran. This whole story about this tree ha has nothing specifically to do with sand gran, except that perhaps she's reading this book and now we know why this all fits in, right? So. Okay. Oh, and we still need to tuck something in here. I forgot about that. So, um, I will probably do that off camera because I think I've been going for quite some time now. Um, it will probably also come from here and I may actually use, um, this. I was thinking about this moon this whole time. So I think I may use that moon. It's very sweet. So yeah, I will create a journal card with that to tuck into that spot. And then I will call it a video um, now and I'll see you again maybe for the next installment of this journal or potentially when it's finished. I don't know. We'll see how my time goes in terms of being able to make some videos. So have a great day. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me in San Gran and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.